In this update, we're going to be going over my updated winter forecast as this winter looks to be one that you won't forget. So let's take you back over the last 30 days and see where we've been. And we've pretty much been above average across a good part of the middle of the country. And you can see these well below average temperature anomalies across the southeast and below average across much of the west coast as well and that pocket of energy across a good part of the southeast that may actually be kind of a a preview of what may be to come for this upcoming winter so if we take a look at the overall precipitation anomalies we are just not seeing the el nino type dynamics really start to kick in we're still seeing a more amplified polar jet stream with these well above average precipitation anomalies continue to take place across much of the Northwest and our North Central states, while much of the Southern jet stream is definitely less amplified. So we have not really seen the kind of the El Nino type dynamics really start to kick in yet. We've been in a moderately moderately uh, El Nino, and this is currently where we stand as about a 1.2, that is a moderate El Nino. And if we take a look at what may be to come through the winter months, that trend actually continues. So even though we're not seeing the full dynamics of an El Nino yet, I think we will start to make that transition as we start winter in December, but it looks to be continuing to remain on the moderate side. It's definitely not going to be going to strong or even super El Nino. That just not does not look to be in the cards, but it definitely remains to be an El Nino and continue to remain on the moderate side. And one of the dynamics too, is we've had well above average air across the central US is we really haven't had much of a snowpack. You can see this is the snowpack for the middle of October and it's basically next to nothing across much of you know southern canada here and so these these air masses are going to be modified as they continue south and i think that trend actually continues at least for another couple of weeks and here's a typical type el nino what you would typically see we haven't seen it yet would you typically see a more warmer you know warmer polar jet coming in off the pacific northwest where you have these well above average temperature anomalies across much of the Pacific Northwest and much of our North Central US into the Great Lakes and a more amplified jet stream, wetter and colder across our Southern flank. We are just not seeing that as of yet, but I feel that we're gonna be making that transition towards that El Nino type setup. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in, you get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the setup over the next two weeks and it's pretty much, we're gonna have that more amplified jet, jet across much of the West, more high ridging across much of the West Coast where those temperatures are really gonna start to soar and that continued lower than average anomalies continue to predominantly put you in on that man and julia oscillation phase eight of which we've been into and those continue i think all the way through october and even going into that first couple of weeks of november if we take a look at that 500 millibar on the overall big picture for the next 30 days we still continue to see a more ridging out west i think the ridge continues out west and you have the weakness underneath across the southeast and much of the east so a lot of the a lot of the storm tracks and a lot of the, a lot of the um you know the cooler anomalies will continue to be a more amplified jet across the southeast and up the eastern seaboard they're going to be predominantly getting most if not almost all the storm track systems you know really over the next you know two to four week time frame and that may be a, like i said a prelude of what may be to come for this upcoming winter because you can definitely see the trend continues for much of the south and much of the eastern two-thirds of the u.s putting those below average anomalies for those first couple of weeks of november and continue to have those warmer warmer above average intrusions across much of the west and much of the desert southwest getting around the four corners regions we have the northwest flow but 
it's going to be predominantly more the mountain regions are going to get the more amplified colder shots of air and eventually that's going to bring the snow track a little bit further south as well so even through the first couple of weeks of november here's the overall snowfall of where that's predominantly going to be so you can see where it is right now and so as we make that transition this is definitely going to be still continue to be more intermountain intermountain snow across these regions but the snow will be continue to push down as the more active subtropical jet the lowering of the jet stream continues to be pushed further south and as that trend continues i think finally we'll start to see a little bit more el nino type dynamics you know as we transition towards the middle of november where we start to see more you know amplified you know precipitation across much of the southern plains as we'll have a more active northwest flow continue to take effect and that will bring the snow track towards thanksgiving time frame a little bit further south as well so here's the overall snowfall as we get towards that you know middle of november through thanksgiving time frame as that colder colder air will continue to try to press further south and it will look likely get there across the mountain regions of new mexico and even in the higher some of the higher elevations as far as into west texas you, you can't be rolled out starting to see some snow across those regions as we get closer to that thanksgiving time frame and then further north we'll start to see more snow start to fly across the intermountain west and across our north central u.s and it is still will be it still will be more confined across the far extreme portions of the white mountain regions into the, the northeast and so i think as we continue to you know trend towards that winter time frame for december january and february time frame if we take a look at the man and julie oscillation your njo i think with all the the anomalies that take place and the analogs that are you know that i think is going to transition for this upcoming winter i think it's going to be predominantly more looking like a kind of a phase eight type setup a combination of a phase eight and a phase one but i'm definitely leaning towards a phase eight of the managed oscillation where we typically see cooler anomalies colder than anomalies across the southern plains and across the southeast and much of the east coast while much of the west will be on the warmer side and well above average across the pacific northwest and across our north central u.s will continue to be on the well above average side for your winter months and so if we tr make that transition if we start to see some of the modeling kind of take place going into that december time frame we start to appear that el nino type transition starting to take place so here's the overall 500 millibar putting the less active polar jet across our north central u.s and these above anomaly above average temperature anomalies across much of montana much of the dakotas through wisconsin through uh, minnesota through much of nebraska here in iowa down to missouri and a more amplified southern jet stream will start to take place and those cooler anomalies will start to take place across the extreme portions of the southern southern branch uh, jet stream across much of deep south texas much of deep south southeast into florida and up the eastern seaboard and that's going into your december time frame and then you start to see more you know amplified precipitation across much of the southeast as well so you start to see heavier rains building building in across much of the you know across the southeast and across much of the carolinas through portions of the ohio valley but especially up the eastern seaboard and up into the northeast and we start to see those kind of a drying out type time frame especially across the pacific northwest and going into that january time frame it even transitioned to more of an el nino type setup with those drier anomalies continue to take shape across much of the pacific northwest and across much of the north central u.s while we have a lot more amplified jet stream to really starting to kick in so i think it's going to be one of those winters it's more uh, on the back half of winter it's going to take a little bit going a little bit to get going but i think it's going to be more amplified on the second half of winter versus the fourth first half so if we take that transition going into january 
we're going to be starting to see heavier rains move back in the picture across much of California and much across the desert southwest, much into the southern plains and Oklahoma into Texas and much of the southeast will continue to remain on the wetter side and up the eastern seaboard and much of the Ohio Valley will be predominantly on the drier side. So going into that, you know, even on the seasonal outlook, we start to see the kind of the same thing. Much of the eastern seaboard continues to remain amplified, taking on more of that MJO phase eight type setup. And we may be kind of stuck there for most, if not almost all of winter, because even the latest update on some of the Enzo outlook and, and mul these multi-system seasonal forecasting guidance start to see that trend continuing across a good part of the Southeast, putting those above average precipitation anomalies across much of the Southern Plains and much of the Southeast and up the Eastern seaboard as well. And if we zoom into the, you know, if we kind of zoom in into the seasonal anomalies on the European, the latest update kind of hints at the same thing, right? So you got these, you know, above average precipitation across much of the Southern Plains, more amplified jet across much of the Southeast and up the Eastern seaboard, above, you know, below average precipitation across much of the West, especially into the Pacific Northwest and just below average across much of the Northern and Central States. And so you're gonna have basically much of the central and Eastern two thirds of the US predominantly getting a lot of the action this winter and the breakdown on the seasonal update. If we zoom in to the, um, you know, the seasonal anomalies, as far as the precipitation front kind of gives you the breakdown. Much of the Southern Plains, much of the Southeast and much of the Eastern seaboard continues to remain on the more amplified, you know, storm track, the more predominant storm track and less active storm track across much of the west and the, especially the pacific northwest much definitely on the drier side and definitely slightly below average if not average across much of the north central states going into the uh, you know, into the four corners region so if you break down as far as the temperatures as far as the temperature look like breaking down predominantly more of that mjo phase eight look the winter i think plays out like this so i think what we're going to be transitioning to is predominantly the most above average precipitation, uh, most above average temperature anomalies are going to be predominantly across the Pacific Northwest, much of Washington, much of Oregon, much of uh, uh, Idaho and Montana, back into Wyoming, much of California and Nevada. And then once you get into our north central states, will still be kind of slightly above average across much of these regions and into the Great Great you know Great Lakes regions. But once you transition across the central central uh, central plains and the southern plains will predominantly take on a little bit more older look because you'll be more into those more in that storm track and the more amplified storm track so i think much of oklahoma will be below average much of texas will be below average much of louisiana mississippi tennessee much of alabama into georgia into florida south carolina north carolina into virginia much of the West Virginia, much of uh, Missouri here into Iowa, going into uh, Pennsylvania, and especially much of the East will be predominantly well below average. I don't think it's not really until you get into Maine where you start seeing more of a, a, a you know higher temperature anomalies across that northern flank. So I I feel it's going to be taking on more of a kind of an MJO phase eight. And again, I'm still favoring. That 2009-2010 analog. So that was a, a pretty good snow year across a good part of the south. And I really think that's going to be taking shape. So here's the overall accumulation far as I think how winter is going to play out. Here's your overall graph on the right-hand corner of the screen. And I think, it, again, it's favoring that more of that 2009-2010 setup. So you're going to have above average temperatures across the west coast. So lightly snow not much not much snow across a good part of seattle and good part of portland those western you know coastal regions and then you're going to have the intermountain west snows but predominantly much of montana will be below average snowfall much of the north central plains much of minnesota much of the dakotas i think as you even if transition into our northern and central states into the central plains again i don't think you're going to be see, you'll still see snow but i think you'll just overall below average snow 
think once you transition towards Kansas City, getting into Oklahoma, getting into Texas, we'll start to see that above average snowfall start to come, you know, take place. These areas across the south really only average about one to two inches of snowfall a year where you see predominantly these blue shaded areas. So these are areas that don't get snowfall every single year, but it's one of those time for times I think the storms and the snowfall, the snow accumulations will be dipping as far south as the I-10 corridor. So don't be surprised if you see snow this year in, say, Houston, into San Antonio, into Austin, those areas across West Texas, those areas into Louisiana, and even central and southern portions of Mississippi still could get some snow this year, even into Alabama, even into Florida Panhandle getting into Georgia. So these are areas into the Carolinas, again, that don't really see snow every single year, but it's one of those years I do feel you are gonna be getting snow and you're gonna be getting those above average snows. And I feel with more of a central based El Nino taking shape and a more moderate El Nino, I feel the East Coast is one of those years they're going to be a pretty memorable winter as i feel most of the northeast and most most of new england is going to see probably about 150 percent of normal average snowfall for this upcoming winter so i feel like you're going to be more of an active storm track i think you're already getting a lot of the systems already and i think the mjo phase eight is going to be predominantly the most favored phase for this upcoming winter. So that's why I do feel most of these areas across a good part of the Mid-Atlantic and most of the Northeast, I think will be starting to be well above average snowfall for this upcoming winter. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Fire protect you before and after the storm.